Whoa, hey. Hey. Uh, can I help you? No, I thought you could uh, use some help. No, um, yeah, no, I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I have an idea. Yeah, well, I, well, I was thinking, you Ooh, know, meat, meat day, day nutrition. Meat day nutrition. Okay. Uh, you, okay, uh, you can do it. Yeah, do yeah it. let's do it. Are right, you ready? You want to roll the intro or? Today on the Two Minute Tuesday, we're going to talk about the five things that you should keep in mind when planning out your meat day nutrition. So let's put two minutes on the clock and we'll get this guy going. Rule number one is really the main point of this entire list. Don't eat stuff you normally don't eat and don't do stuff you normally don't do. The idea on a meat day is to perform as well as possible and you don't want to introduce any new variables. So if you don't eat donuts on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't eat burritos on a day-to-day -day basis, don't eat those with the meat. They can make you feel bad, nauseous, not perform well, and for what? It's not gonna improve your performance acutely, so you should eat stuff that you normally eat, take the supplements you normally take, and that's really the majority of the list. Rule number two is drink when you wanna drink, and usually by this I mean water, or if you mix stuff with water because you like the way it tastes better, i.e. Gatorade, BCAs, or what have you, that's fine. Don't force down fluids, and don't refrain from fluids. The data pretty clearly shows that if you force yourself to drink water, or if you restrict yourself from drinking water, you ultimately do worse. So drink when you feel that thirst coming on, and you don't have to force stuff down if you're not thirsty. Rule number three, caffeinate as you normally would. And so if using caffeine in your day-to-day -day training, that's okay to use it during meat day, certainly. It's unlikely to provide a hugely beneficial effect if you're not used to it beforehand, and the risk is that it makes you feel worse and you actually perform worse than you otherwise would. Uh, in general, caffeine dosages run between three to six or three to nine milligrams per kilogram body weight to have a potential positive benefit. And depending on how you're using that, if it's a powder, a pill, or other liquid, getting that uh, into your system is going to be individualized depending on how you either respond to caffeine in your normal day-to-day -day intake. So again, most of this stuff should have been done in training so you have a good idea of when you want to caffeinate. My general rule of thumb is right in the middle of your warm-ups is to take the caffeine since that's likely to be timed well when you do your first attempt. For long meats, you're going to have to uh, stretch this out a little bit further. You're unlikely to run into problems with overdosing unless you're using huge, huge doses of caffeine. But again, you should have figured this out in training uh, what you like from a caffeine perspective. Rule number four, try not to cut weight. And again, this almost goes without saying, if you're coming into the meat and you're having to do a massive water cut, a massive weight loss, that's likely to affect your performance in a negative way only versus having any sort of positive benefit on your performance. Imagine two different scenarios. One, where you go into a meat, you don't have to worry about your weight, you weigh in, all is well, no stress there. The other meat, you're going in, you have to cut a ton of weight, it's down to the wire, you have to you know, sit in a sauna, do all this other stuff, that's more stressful. And certainly there are differences between a 24 hour weigh-in or a two hour weigh-in, but ultimately not having to cut a bunch of weight is better. And finally, rule number five, don't eat too much. Uh, I know this seems a little strange, but the idea is that you could potentially eat a bunch of food very, very quickly or, and make yourself sick, which again, most people wouldn't do in their normal life if they were getting ready to go to the gym and train, okay? Or alternatively, you could eat right up until you're like about to take your warm-ups. And again, that's not something that people would do prior to going to the gym. So you should definitely eat after you weigh in, if you weigh in first, or you should eat prior to starting your warm-ups for squats uh, and give yourself enough time to where that food digests. Usually that's an hour to two hours is that kind of sweet spot. Uh, after you're done with your squats, if you know that you have another hour or two before you're going to either bench or press, depending on what kind of meat you're doing, you should eat again. But if you don't have a lot of time, then you can do one of two things. Either you can have something very small, like a whey protein shake or BCAAs, or you can just not eat entirely and just uh, use fluids at that point. Uh, in general, I advise people when the meats are going to be under five hours to do a meal prior to squats, usually after weigh-ins, uh, and then a meal before deadlifts. Uh, again, usually if they have enough time to actually eat something, even if it's something small, and have about an hour of downtime so where they're not really moving around and making themselves sick. The take home message is don't do anything that you wouldn't normally do on a training day. Don't eat too much food, don't eat weird stuff, don't take way too much caffeine or way too little caffeine, don't try to do a huge cut before you go in and train. And I'm not trying to nocebo anybody or make somebody have a bad outcome because I'm trying to scare them. I'm trying to make sure that you have the best performance possible after all of your hard work.
okay? Don't let game day nutrition mess you up.